Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Natural Food Pantry Education Initiative. Returning today for a conversation on nutrients for bone health is Dr. Kate Rayom, naturopathic doctor. Dr. Kate Rayom is a graduate and a former faculty member of the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine. As a very reputable educator, Dr. Kate speaks internationally on many topics related to health and wellness. She is the author of the best-selling book, Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox, How a Little-Known Vitamin Can Save Your Life. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Kate as a regular presenter at our Natural Food Pantry Education Series. Welcome back, Dr. Kate. It's always wonderful to engage these conversations with you. Thanks, Natasha. Great to be back chatting with you again. So bone health, let's begin the conversation by talking about something we, we all know about. Everybody knows that calcium is fundamental when it comes to bones. Doctors are quick to prescribe calcium to patients when they need support for their bones. So can you explain a little bit about why, why calcium is so important for bone health? Mm -hmm. This is a great place to start because calcium, of course, is important for bones. We know that the bones are you know, dense calcified material. Um, and so, and when, you know, when bone density is lacking and ultimately it's a reduction in bone density that leads to increased fracture risk that we see, for example, with osteoporosis. Um, and that one way to help restore that is by getting more calcium back into the bones, but bones are much more than just calcium. Uh, there are other minerals in there. There are other nutrients that help guide the minerals into the bones and keep them there. There's a protein matrix that's very important in terms of keeping those minerals in the bones. And so um, it's true calcium is important, but it's certainly not the single only or arguably even the most important nutrient uh, for bone health. And it certainly has been, I think, overemphasized. Uh, to the detriment of other helpful uh, approaches that we could be taking. And so, yes, it's good to keep in mind the importance of calcium, but not overemphasize that and keep it in its place. Yeah, that's a great point. I was just about to ask you about, about other nutrients. I know, I know there's, there's, you know, a whole community or collection of nutrients that work together synergistically to support bone health. And a lot of the high quality um, supplements to support bone health contain a, a, a vast, you know, a wide spectrum of these nutrients. So can you touch on that a little bit? Can you explain what some of the other important nutrients are and what roles they play? Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, you know, I think the concept we had around calcium is, you know, if a little is good, then more is better. And so then more and more and more calcium was recommended thinking, well, if you just give enough, uh, you could get it into the bones, but that's not how it works. You need a certain amount of calcium, but that there are other nutrients that help draw the calcium into the bones, uh, help with calcium metabolism, keep it in check. So uh, one big one, another mineral is magnesium and calcium and magnesium, you know, they're buddies. They are, uh, they work together. There's always partner nutrients um, in nature. And certainly these guys are a partner. Uh, arguably magnesium is more challenging to get through our diet. Uh, the recommended in daily intake of magnesium is 400 milligrams roughly for adults. And by adults, I mean uh, people like 14 years and older, so teens and adults. And that's a lot of magnesium that you need to build bone health when you're young, maintain it uh, when you're older. Plays a very important role as one. Vitamin D, of course. I think everybody knows about vitamin D and, and often D and calcium are recommended together which is great because vitamin D will help you absorb more calcium from the intestines. And that's important to be absorbing the calcium. And it does other things for bone health. There's no doubt about that. Um, although um, vitamin D, once the calcium is absorbed, has no control over where that goes and whether it actually ends up getting into the bones. And so that's actually the role of vitamin K2, which is certainly a nutrient that has been overlooked for bone health. And it will take the calcium that's been absorbed and guide it into the bones where it will do the most good. So that's just, uh, you know, a few main nutrients that really play a big role in getting the calcium to the bones and keeping it there. Yeah, thank you. Um, magnesium. I know calcium, magnesium, we often think of it as those two nutrients as supportive to muscle health, muscle mm -hmm. contraction and relaxation. But I don't know. I don't know that many people know or are aware that magnesium plays such an important role in bone bone health. 
as well as vitamin D, K2, and other, other nutrients. So um, is it possible then that people, some people are consuming enough calcium, they have an abundance of calcium, but that it's the other nutrients that they're deficient in or they're lacking in order to utilize the calcium properly? Definitely. Uh, I mean, in the North American diet, if you compare it to some other diets in the world, for example, would be considered to be relatively high in terms of calcium intake. Uh, anybody who's having any kind of dairy foods, you're probably getting in um, all the calcium that your body can you know, easily absorb or utilize uh, just from those foods. And it's rare that you would really need much of a supplement, certainly not the whopping doses we've been recommended compared to, for example, there are some places like Japan where uh, bone health on average tends to be better, lower rates of osteoporosis. There are lots of factors that go into that, but um, their diets compared to ours would be considered to be very low in calcium. And so it really isn't the only factor and getting the amount of calcium you need through foods is relatively easy for most people. Yeah. And what are the risks of deficiencies of vitamin D, magnesium, and the other nutrients um, supportive of, of bone health? So when it comes to strength, integrity, density of the bones, um, how crucial is it that we really do obtain the right balance of those nutrients? Mm -hmm. It's really important. There is definitely research linking uh, low levels of magnesium. Well, we know probably all of your you know, listeners have heard that magnesium is used for hundreds of reactions in the body and its role in bone health is just you know, one area of that. Um, as well as we know low levels of vitamin D will impact bone health in addition to immune health and other aspects of health. Um, as well as, you know, studies show, for example, supplementing or getting in vitamin D and K2 together will help improve bone density and, and bone health uh, better than either one alone. And so we do know there is uh, research and evidence to show that these nutrients make a difference in bone health and that when they're low, bone health is impacted. And how important is it for Canadians in particular to supplement with vitamin D? Uh, I know deficiencies are, are really common um, in our part of the world and um, supplementation, I believe, is pretty critical, especially through the winter months. But how would somebody know if they're getting enough vitamin D? Um, what are the best ways to obtain vitamin D? Mm -hmm. well, the only way to know for sure is through a blood test because um, there aren't really very many, say, signs or symptoms of low vitamin D, other than, you know, if you're sick frequently throughout the winter, that can be a sign of low vitamin D, for example. But really getting a blood test once in a while or, you know, ask your doctor for that, you may have to pay out of pocket for it, but it's worth it just to get your levels checked. Because even if you're taking vitamin D, it's surprising how often I'll see people who are taking D, but their levels are still on the low side or below an, an ideal range. Um, and we know it's the sunshine vitamin, right? And so in Canada, in the wintertime, you're getting zero vitamin D from the sun. And uh, it's very hard to get through foods. The only foods that naturally contain it would be um, in any you know, appreciable amounts are deep cold water fish, salmon, trout, uh, things like that would have some, but those aren't things that we can necessarily eat every day. There are you know, restricted guidelines on eating larger fish on a daily basis because of the environmental contaminants. And so really, you're right, Natasha, there's just um, no getting around, or really no beating a supplement. And it's vitamin D is probably the least expensive supplement on the shelves. It's like pennies a dose, uh, and it can make a big impact in bone health and other aspects of health. Great, thank you. And in terms of nutrients, are there any foods that can interfere with the absorption of, of any of these uh, nutrients that are critical for bone health? Oh, really good question. Uh, certainly uh, calcium can be a tricky one in terms of um, interaction or interference, inhibition of absorption with other nutrients. Iron uh, and calcium, they can interfere with one another, uh, sometimes other minerals as well. Um, usually in the if you're taking it in, you know, um, recommended doses, uh, you're you're mostly okay. Sometimes calcium can come in such high doses, and that's the real problem. Trying to absorb uh, such high doses is more the issue. 
Um, and so taking it in smaller doses can be, you know, uh, make a difference on that. But in, you know, in general, especially with the fat soluble vitamins like D and K2, they're such small amounts and they're really well absorbed. Um, you don't have to be too concerned about that. Okay, great. And I know you already talked about some of the misconceptions and the myths around calcium and bone health. Is there anything else that you would like to share um, in regards to how people can make infor informed choices about bone health, about their supplements, their diet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be good for people to be checking with their naturopathic doctor, for example, to be getting a more functional approach to their bone health. And I think there's one really important overlooked aspects of bone health. We spend a lot of time talking about calcium or magnesium or how to get those into the bones and not think about where are they going? What's holding them in? And ultimately, as I mentioned before, the bones have this protein matrix that's in fact made of collagen. Uh, and collagen not just holds the minerals in your bones, but it gives your bones a bit of bounce, a bit of resilience. So when you fall, something just doesn't crack, but you should be able to bounce a bit. Uh, and so making sure you have enough collagen uh, in your body, you know, with time, we tend to lose collagen that can impact our bone health can make a difference with bone health too. Excellent. Thank you. The last question I have is around exercise and bone health. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that, on exercise and bone? Really, really important. It's just a physiological reaction that when we bear weight on our bodies, that essentially, you know, the gravity and the pulling of the muscles on bones um, stimulates uh, strength in the bones. It stimulates the body to help strengthen the bones. And so any weight bearing exercise, uh, strength training as well uh, is a really good idea if you're looking to maintain uh, your bone health. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Kate. As always, this was very informative and educational. I really appreciate you taking time to connect with us and deliver this information. You're welcome, Natasha. Thanks. Great chatting with you. For those who would like more information, please visit our website, naturalfoodpantry.ca. Visit the classes and services tab. And please be sure to subscribe to our newsletter um, also at naturalfoodpantry.ca on our homepage. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more education and information and inspiration. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Stay healthy.